So for a while, it seemed like Sony was done with uh, high-end flagship full-sized headphones. They had the MDR MA900 and the MDR uh, Z1000, but neither of them filled the same niche as something like the SA5000. Last year, at the end of last year, Sony released this. This is the Sony MDR Z7, which is a high-end flagship full-size closed uh, headphone. And if you've watched this channel long enough, you'll know that I have a bit of a soft spot for Sony, but I will be the first one to tell you that the company puts out just as many hits as they do misses. So the question with this uh, headphone is, is this one of the hits or the misses? Well, you're watching Lachlan Likes a Thing, and let's find out. Today's review was crowdfunded by several months worth of contributions from these awesome viewers. If you enjoy my content and want to see more cool gear like this on the channel, join in and help out by following the link in the description of this video. Thanks. So I bought the Z7 at the end of October 2014, and if you remember from my earlier videos, this is actually my second unit, because the first unit had some issues, uh, it rattled with low frequency bass tones. Luckily, no issues with this second unit. Now I bought the Z7 at a staff discount price, because I have a friend who works at a Sony retail kiosk. Um, I was asked not to disclose what the staff price is for these kinds of headphones. Um, but I should let you know, I bought the Z7 for well below the MSRP of this headphone, which is 799 Australian dollars. Um, I noticed this morning that the Amazon retail street price for this headphone is 529 US dollars. And at the end of this review, uh, I'll let you know if I think that's a fair price or not for these headphones. Now from that price tag, you can tell that this is a serious product from Sony. It's not as expensive as some of the other flagship headphones, like say the Sennheiser HD 800, but in terms of pricing, it's kind of similar to something like the Fostex TH600, which puts it at the top of the middle tier or at the bottom of the top tier, depending on uh, how you wanna look at it. You can tell from just looking at the headphone in terms of build quality, Sony themselves consider this a top tier product um, because they've basically just pulled out all the stops. Sony went all out with the fit and finish on this headphone. The Z7's external design screams quality. We can start with the gorgeously shaped magnesium metal ear cups which have a speckled texture and sculpted curves to them that just love the camera. The attention to detail is fantastic. The stitching on the plush headband, the precision of the adjustment mechanisms, the luxurious softness of the ear pads. I feel like you could spend hours just marveling at the exposed driver alone. Just try not to get hair in it. The one thing to note is that the Z7 is a closed headphone, but it has not one, but two ports on each ear cup at the top and bottom. This means that noise isolation is actually quite poor with this headphone, and I would not recommend it if external noise isolation is critical. Needless to say, this headphone is too large to be used as a portable. The detachable cable on the Z7 is just as nice, with a secure screw-in mechanism, serrations on the cable below the Y-split that prevent tangling, and a substantial Y-split and headphone jack. Sony also sells some fancy high-end cable for the Z7, but you know I don't go in for that kind of thing. Now all of this would be moot if the Z7 felt like a ton of bricks on the head, but I'm very happy to report that the Z7 is actually a very, very comfortable headphone. Um, first of all, it's very lightweight. Uh, it's 335 grams, which is actually very light for a headphone of this size. Uh, especially if you consider that something like the M50X weighs 285 grams. The headband is really well designed on the Z7. It makes a really uh, broad point of contact with the top of my skull. Uh, so there's really even pressure distribution. There's a nice plush cushion at the top of it. The ear pads are really deep. They have a kind of very broad uh, surface to them. They make a lot of contact with the side of the head. Um, they're still not gonna be quite as breathable as an open-backed headphone, 
but they are very comfortable ear pads that do manage to seal with my glasses. So that's a big plus in my book. Um, everything about the Z7 seems to have been considered from the point of uh, listening comfort for hours and hours. And that applies just as much to the actual physical comfort of this headphone as it does to the sound signature. So what do I mean by that? Well, this is where we get into the sound of the Z7 and this is where I have some pretty mixed feelings about the Z7. I've had this headphone for well over three months now and I've developed a sort of love-hate relationship with it. I'll put it bluntly, the Z7 is a really, really thick sounding headphone. It has a, a strong emphasis on the bass and the lower mids and the high frequency treble is rolled off and quite blunted with the Z7. And that description is gonna scare off a lot of people immediately because the Z7 is quite unusual for a headphone in this price range. Um, it, it doesn't have a lot of apparent immediate detail in the treble. It doesn't have that kind of finesse that you would expect from a headphone of this price range. But um, it's also the kind of headphone that has some really interesting qualities to it. So the best parts of the Z7 sound is that it has a really spacious, a really big sense of scale and depth, especially in the bass. It has a very uh, bombastic kind of sound to it. Um, and it has a really clear tone in the mids. They're quite well full bodied. They're very clean sounding. Um, those are the best aspects of the sound. But for a lot of people, this is just gonna sound uh, immediately because of that treble roll off. It's gonna sound congested. It's gonna sound compressed. It's gonna sound even uncontrolled with the sheer amount of bass that there is on the Z7. And I think a lot of people are just gonna put this headphone on, listen to it for a minute, and then just kind of dismiss it entirely. And uh, I think that's kind of a risk that Sony took with this signature. Now, I shouldn't say that the Z7 sounds entirely uh, lacking in energy because the mids, as I said, do have a lot of body to them. Uh, especially the lower mids, but even with the female vocals, they have a sort of glossy forwardness to it. But the treble is rolled off, and that means that it robs everything of an overall sense of space or an overall sense of air. Probably the most controversial aspect of the Z7 sound is gonna be the bass, because it's got a absolutely massive bass section, and it's not like low throbbing kind of stomach churning sub bass like it is on the Fostex TH600. It's not punchy or kind of crunchy bass like you'd find on a V-Moto M100. The Z7 has more of a broad, more of a diffuse kind of bass tone. It has um, a very broad bass emphasis and it sounds sort of diffuse. Um, on the one hand, it gives everything a sort of this resonant, uh, grand sense of impact. On the other hand, it, it doesn't sound very punchy. It sounds somewhat loose. Some people are going to say it sounds artificial or uncontrolled or even a little bit flabby. Now, I'm not going to sugarcoat this. I bought this headphone for well below recommended retail price. If I had bought this headphone at the recommended retail price, I would have been sorely disappointed because it seems to lack the kind of finesse or fidelity that a lot of uh, headphones around this price have. So compared to the TH600, it doesn't nearly have that kind of level of uh, treble detail or texture. Uh, now for a lot of people, myself included, the TH600 is very forward in the treble. So that's uh, you know the other side of the coin, but it, it, I feel like the Z7 is a little too far the other way. Even compared to something like the V-Motor M100, the M100 seems to be punchier and better controlled than the Z7. It doesn't have that sense of scale. It doesn't have that, um, you know, overall spaciousness to the sound, but it is more of a tightly controlled headphone. Even Sony's own MDR1A gets you a lot of the technical performance of the Z7. Uh, and even I would say a bit more energy in the mids and the treble but the 1A has a much kind of heftier, I would say, poorly integrated bass section compared to the Z7. Um, but you know, this will get you most of the way there. 
And compared to an open headphone like the AKG K712 or even the HD650, this is a completely different sort of sound. Uh, if you think the HD650 sounds veiled, you'll think the HD, I'm sorry, you'll think the Z7 has been stuffed into a sleeping bag. Despite of all of this, despite all of this, there's something about the 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 pure sense of scale and and the and the clarity of the tone in the mids that is kind of satisfying with the Z7 and it definitely works better for some genres than for others. It's it's a signature that as I said, you can listen very happily to all sorts of genres of music for very long periods of time without any sort of fatigue. Uh, and I'll show you some example tracks of where I think it works well and where I think it doesn't work well. The Z7 is a relatively undemanding headphone and doesn't require a great deal of amplification. It's perfectly happy with my Objective 2 amplifier and it seems you can even drive it comfortably out of portable players, though I'm not sure why you would. The ethereal R&B track Lights On by FKA Twigs is the kind of music the Z7 does brilliantly with. The Z7's glossy mids mean that the artist's uh, atmospheric vocals kind of float above a very deep, pulsing, turbulent bass line. By the way, this is probably my favourite new musical discovery this year so far, and it's well worth checking out. Likewise, the Z7's mid-tone does nicely with acoustic guitar and male vocals. Oblivion from Patrick Wolf's album Sun Dark Plus Riverlight just shines on the Z7 where the clarity of mid-tone really lends this track atmosphere and dynamics. The Z7 doesn't do nearly so well with stringed instruments and upper harmonics. On the track Many Lives 49 MP by Final Fantasy, also known as Owen Pallet, the Z7 just sounds dull and stuffy and the strings lack the kind of bite or texture that you would expect because of the high frequency roll off. On a track like Radiohead's Fake Plastic Trees, the Z7 stumbles as well because the cymbals and the vocal texture are dulled due to the high frequency roll off and as a result the whole dynamic of the track is compressed. So I'm going to end this review by just telling you how I would approach the Z7 if I was considering buying it. First of all, I wouldn't buy this headphone without a demo, and you should be able to uh, demo this headphone at any Sony retail kiosk uh, if they have those where you live. If they don't, see if you can demo the MDR1A, because it doesn't sound entirely like the Z7, but it sounds very, very close. So it's got that same kind of diffuse tone to it. It's maybe a little more forward in the mids. It has much more of a heftier bass tone, but this will give you a, a decent impression of the sound of the Z7. If you, and if you like this, you'll probably like the Z7. Uh, heck, you may even like the 1A more than the Z7, depending on your kind of preferences. Now, if you want a headphone that has a lot of bass and you want something that's more controlled I actually think the M100 is, for many people, going to be a better choice than the Z7. First of all, it's it's cheaper. Second of all, it's, I would say, more of a tight sound with much more energy uh, in the mids. That said, it doesn't have that sense of scale and it's not nearly as comfortable as the Z7. So if you want something that's going to be worn for hours and hours for home use, um, again, the Z7 is sort of a candidate in that respect. Now, the comparison to the TH600 is really interesting. Um, if you remember, uh, I almost bought a TH600 in Hong Kong, and the real reason I held back was because I had the Z7 at home. And that isn't to say that I like the Z7 more than the TH600. But as much as I like the TH600, and it is a phenomenal headphone with this incredible, uh, incredible bass section and uh, this amazingly detailed treble section, I found the TH600 treble can be fatiguing and it doesn't work for every single kind of track. And if I was going to have one closed headphone that I was going to wear at home for long periods of time, I felt safer owning the Z7 than I would with the TH600. My last comparison is going to be a little bit out of the left field, but it sort of makes sense if you're the kind of person who is after a flagship product and you want it to be a Sony. So it's 
a comparison with the MDR, sorry, the XBA Z5, which is sort of the uh, IEM uh, flagship cousin of the Z7. Now, if the Z7 sounded like the Z5, this review would have been a lot more positive because basically the Z7 has, sorry, the Z5 has the sound that I wish the Z7 had. They both have a really grand kind of bassy sound to them, but the bass on the Z5 is better controlled, it's punchier, uh, and also the treble on the Z5 is more detailed, it's a bit more forward, it has a bit more energy to it without being uh, too forward. So honestly, of the three new Sony flagship products, the Z7, the Z5, and the MDR1A, I feel like the Z7 is the weakest in its respective product category. So if you asked me whether I thought it was a hit or a miss, at the recommended retail price, I would have to give this headphone a miss. Um, even close to that recommended retail price, I feel like it doesn't really compete well with other headphones, open headphones or closed headphones in that sort of pricing category. Now, that said, I don't think it's a terrible headphone. I think it's actually quite a unique headphone that's gonna work really well for particular genres of music. If you listen to a lot of electronic or a lot of kind of more aggressive genres, I think the Z7 works really well. And I personally, you know, despite all its flaws, really enjoy using the Z7 because it's really comfortable. It works uh, relatively well with, with all kinds of genres of music. It's relaxing and mellow to listen to. You can wear it for hours and hours. So for some people, this is gonna be a headphone that they can just buy and that's the only headphone that they'll ever need. The critical flaw I think is really just with the pricing, um, where the pricing puts it compared to other alternatives. So if you can find a Z7 for something like 400 to 450 US dollars, I think that's a fair price to pay for the Z7. If you're gonna pay more than that, I would really hesitate because at that point you're gonna ask yourself, what is the premium I'm gonna place on the Z7's comfort and build quality? Because that's what you're really paying extra for. Anyway, I'm looking forward to your comments and questions about the Z7. This was a pretty interesting review to do. And once again, a big thank you to all the viewers who helped out uh, to get this headphone on the channel. I uh, couldn't have done it without you. And um, you know, if you wanna join in and help out, you can do that at patreon.com slash Lachlan Likes a Thing. You can also talk to me on Facebook at facebook.com slash Lachlan Likes a Thing or on Twitter at Lock Likes a Thing. Thank you to all my regular subscribers and happy listening.